Welcome everybody to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Uh, today I have a watercolor tutorial for you all. Um, this one will probably be, I hope it might be less talking than just more painting. Mainly because it's, um, I guess it's about 9 o'clock at night right now. And just uh, hard today to find the motivation to paint. So, you know, um, we'll just see what happens. I think I'll probably play with the, um, the sap green Venetian red tonalism palette. And I'll mix in the probably the thal blue and um, the ultramarine. So we'll kind of stay with those. So kind of what we've been doing a little bit of recently. And uh, we'll just play with it from there. So I'm just wiping off the palette. Uh, saturate the paper. Um, in the YouTube comments, there's... Um, I don't, I'm not really sure how to refer to people um, either by the name that they have on a um, YouTube or Patreon or something like that or Facebook or um, if they say their name and whatnot um, in a video. Um, but it's uh, uh, Dharma was um, the beginning of the, the YouTube handle. And I believe they were asking about water concentration. So can't really there you go you can see a little bit of reflective sheen on the top to give you an idea of the water that I have right up in here and that gives you an idea of that concentration when I move it to the side you might be able to see that puddle if I move it close I don't want you to hurt your eyes when it refocuses it kind of gives you an idea of how much water is taking place in fact I have water running across the paper like that um, they were also asking about just the hake, because there's different types of hake. So some of uh, the people that have been watching these videos have been letting me know that they're starting to get hakes in in the mail, and they've been ordering them from different locations. So that's really cool, really exciting that um, you know more people are getting into this uh, style of painting. There's a lot of us YouTubers that use the hake and follow this style. The main thing. You want to keep in mind is um, the Ron Ranson Hake. I had a piece of uh, paper with his name written on it. Um, R O N R A N S O N. So Ron Ranson. And essentially, what it is is we utilize a Hake that is um, it's Asian in origin but it's pre-worn, so it allows us to um, get a finer point with it and do different applications and whatnot whenever we're painting. So that's why we utilize that. And um, somebody, I think, today had asked what size I use, and I use a medium. I originally used a large. Then I had, to give you an idea, here's the large. Is this the one I used? And there's the, the small. The small and the medium are fine for, well, it was just fun using all of them and just going across the um, sizes with it, like a five by seven or an eight by 10, or an eight by 10, 11 by 14, eight by 10, 11 by 14. But medium is where I wind up um, sitting. You could see how much I've used this one in comparison. And it's probably thallo green or thallo blue that's staying this. It's good here. Anyway, so um, like I was saying, there's YouTubers. Uh, you want to keep in mind the name Ron Ranson. He's the one that kind of introduced this to this um, fast and loose style of painting. There's a Facebook page um, dedicated to it, uh, Ron Ranson Disciples. And what else? I'll... Uh, I always try to drop names and shout outs to other people that use the Hake brush or other people that give tutorials. Um, 
I think Lois Davidson has a tutorial on controlling the water and the hake brush, as well as Joe Menza. And um, Matthew Clemens might have that as well. Um, who else? David Usher, Stephen Cronin. Um, a lot of those people have that as well. Anyway, I had said that I probably wasn't going to talk that much this video just to kind of just getting a pain in mood. Just trying to build that motivation and here I am just rambling a whole bunch. So I'm just going to take these two and mix them into this brownish mixture. And I use a uh, Stuart Davies approach or a... Um, Well, it's uh, Dennis Sheehan. They're two oil painters that um, seem to not so much have a um, landscape in mind as they kind of create landscapes and just let the shapes take place. So it's kind of fast and loose and um, just spontaneous. And then speaking of spontaneity, there is um, Mind of Watercolor who has videos about spontane uh, spontaneous painting, where he's kind of just uh, putting it in, letting it flow, and then creating shapes from there. I'm not quite sure if he works from a photograph or something like that. That's Mind of Watercolor. But he has uh, a few different videos on that uh, spontaneous painting. And it's pretty, um, it's really entertaining. Uh, Stuart Davies and Dennis Sheehan, the oil painters, have their approaches as well. And it's crazy to see how they uh, put on and wipe off the oil painting, the oil paint. For a while now, I've been uh, the past few days saying that I need to pull out the oil paintings, oil paint. But um, I do that not as much as I should. So maybe tomorrow I'll be able to get some oil painting done. I'm just building up shape, water, reflections, and the shapes that take place. They might not be the final product. just layering um, this like I said creating shapes um, using tonal values and concentration um, to give ideas of depth and I'm gonna use a paper towel to lift and wipe and swipe and create textures and and change tones I did have two experimental ideas, but I don't know if they'll take place. Um, I have been, every so often I, I guess I, you could say I kind of have a, um, a love affair with uh, Quinn Gold. And every so often um, I'll start playing around with it. And then I'll, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll just go back and forth with... Um, with Quinn Gold, play with it in a palette, see if something works with it, see if something doesn't work. And, um, it's, it's just a really cool pigment, but the only place I really found like a true place for it was with, um, Indigo and, uh, Brown Matter, just a triad of those. Uh, but yesterday, and I did a time lapse. I didn't upload it, so I just um, I just kept fiddling with it, pushed it too far, 
but um, it was just kind of like super experiment on my own uh, with with Quinn Gold and the um, Quinn Rose, Quinn Quinacridone Rose, and um, Thalo Green, and I felt like I was able to kind of push it into a nice horizon light, just a sunset. And it's something that is kind of an end goal for me with um, tonalism. Because I truly have a hard time with... Um, there's, a, there's kind of a stereotypical um, tonalist image that is uh, taking place in contemporary art today. Where it's a very um, silhouetted tree and very you know dark sky um, shadowed ground and a kind of a strip of light here or here or here and it might be red or orange or um, white and um, it's just truly beautiful and people that are doing it are fantastic I just haven't been able to achieve it they are utilizing oil paints but I would like to be able to do it with um, with watercolor but one thing I've had difficulty with is pursuing um, darks. If you watch this channel a lot, I always talk about um, the tonal shift. This palette is one that gives us quite a tonal shift where it dries lighter than we put the paint in. And that's kind of an issue that I've um, just been exploring because I feel like that's part of it. And then there's also the concept that in order to light in one spot or darken one spot you can light in another so I've been playing around with that idea so there's just a lot taking place and um, I don't know how ready I am to start filming videos with just that I thought I was on the right path with the um, Quinn Rose and the Thalo Green because with that I um, get that awesome gray and I don't get a, too much of a uh, color shift, a tonal shift when it dries. It just, it just works so well. But I did try it in there and it just uh, wasn't seeming to mix right. But then again, that was a late night painting as well. Some other things that have been making their way into these experiments. Um, lemon yellow. I found recently actually works pretty decent with um, these two colors where it doesn't um, get too yellow and it doesn't turn too uh, f like a kind of fake green If I make this darker as we progress and let this, that'll help this recede back more. If I make it darker coming down to this point, it'll do a, um, it'll push that part back. And I might be able to lift out a, um, a barn. We'll see. Every so often, you'll either hear or see me stand up. I film these live on a um, website called Twitch. And people could come in and comment and chat in real time with me. So I either get up to check and see how things are looking 
through the camera or just to get a uh, further view from it or I'm just checking to see if anybody's commenting or anybody's in the um, in the chat room I would like to get to the point where oh that's a good time to mention uh, patreon so I have a patreon account I like to do a lot of free YouTube videos but um, I set up a Patreon just in case anybody wants to, um, you know, throw a few dollars my way to help support and on um, purchase art supplies. I also do have a few, some exclusive content for um, patron members. And they're, they're cheap tiers. It's like a $3 tier and a $5 tier. So um, somebody asked about a, a year long subscription, but I'm not sure how I can, uh, how I can run that yet. So. I'm going to look into that. But um, yeah, so talking about the Twitch uh, live streaming, I would like to be able to get it to the point where um, you know, I can set a date and time and people can say, hey, you know, I can, I can sign on at that time or no, I can't sign on at that time. And then live stream and um, in real time I could paint and converse with you all answer questions uh, if there's anything you wanted me to experiment with if you were just like hey why don't you think about li lifting highlights right here and say yeah sure let's give it a try and see what happens you know so we can experiment together as I say quite often um, I'm a school teacher but we are out until August so this um, satisfies a uh, desire to, I guess, teach or just to talk. Talked to my um, uncle today. I uh, my my mother's side of the family. I grew up. I was born down in Louisiana. I grew up on Long Island in New York. I talked to my uncle, and then some friends you know, from Long Island, and uh, about the current you know crisis and how things are up there. And yeah, compared to what I am hearing from my relatives and friends there. Uh, Louisiana we're doing really good we're really lucky so um, New Orleans isn't doing the best right now but okay so I'm mixing some ultramarine into this and this is just to kind of shift it a little bit and, um, and like I said the tonal shift when this dries lightens up so I need those um, the, the, the blues and then and it, it just seems to help Scientifically, I'm not sure, quite sure why that's, it does that. I'm sorry. So I was um, saying that I went to Walmart today, and uh, things were looking pretty good. Um, there was no, uh, what was it? Just kind of cleaning supplies were out, but there was a lot of other stuff. And... I picked up the cats a lot more toys this time and I was standing there in the aisle which I know or I'm not, not really supposed to be doing right now I'm supposed to kind of go in and go out I was looking at the cat toys and it's like the cats are obviously restless not that the cats go out or do anything but um this is my first time having cats so I got them some um It was like a big pack for like five dollars of like ten or twenty toys, and I put some uh, catnip in there and shook it up, and then started giving it out to them. And um, 
you know, some of them have bells in them and whatnot. And I was standing in the store just thinking, well, I know that it'll probably drive us crazy. And I know that, I, well, I was thinking, I know that I can handle it. I know that it'll probably drive my fiance nuts. So I knew that like, I could hold out longer than she could. So I was like, let me get these cat toys. So that was, um, that's fun. So it's really cool. I don't have any kids or anything like that yet. So the cats are the kids. I also have some pet rats. They're, um, they're cute. But unfortunately I didn't, um, you know, work with them enough when they were younger. So I didn't get a lot of, um, they, they don't really like being held. Kind of just ranting about, or not ranting, just telling you all about my life story. So it's not so much a painting tutorial as it is just a relax and paint. For some reason, people say that, I don't understand how they, some people have said that my voice is actually kind of relaxing. Um, if you're one of the people that think that, uh, thank you. But I also, I just, I don't see where you get it from, but thank you. I'm seeing a reflection take place in here and kind of a sky reflection, so I'm liking that. Although I'm not liking this leading off into this emptiness, so I'm probably gonna have to block it off with some sort of shape at some point. And right in here, I think is where I do wanna scrape a barn, not to be going wild with barns and whatnot the past few days, but I think it'd be pretty fun. And of course, as per usual, I do not have scissors in here to cut the size that I need. So I'm just scraping down. Whenever you scrape, use your card and use the, um, the natural flat edge of that card. The unnatural side will um, give an erratic scrape. Uh, let's see. I think last time I did try cutting this card, it was just like very, very hard to do. day whittling at it. I will be right back. I'm going to go get something to cut it. All right, I'm back. So, um, with these cards, you can cut them to different shapes and uh, different thicknesses, and that will help you with what you need. Like I'm looking for a thin enough shape to create the little peak, the little roof of this barn. So I'm gonna cut this a little bit thinner. There we go. So flat edge, natural flat edge of it. There we go. Now this building is sitting not quite flat. So we could scrape it and kind of start correcting this or we can just wait until later on and then start uh, painting bushes and grass in front of it and help it sit in place so I'm gonna leave it be even though it looks a little awkward right now and we'll come back to it later on so I'll start building these shapes forward 
and building their shadows and reflections. You can start softening them. We haven't used the rigor at all in this one. Um, and that's, it's always tempting, but I am going to resist that temptation and I'm gonna come in and start utilizing it. And now would be probably a good time for us to take our thalo blue. Um, with this, I found that there's the ultramarine that I can use and the thalo blue. And it feels like I do get some different greens um, and potential warm, cool type options, uh, different darks. Also, I utilize the Payne's Gray in this um, one. I haven't used it yet. But I kind of use them to push things back and forth a little bit. And I found, and this is um, kind of just to clarify things, nobody's asked about this yet, but I use the term push back and forth. And what I mean by that, and I kind of use it as warm and cool, where something cooler to recede back, um, something warmer to come forward. So when I say push back and forth, I mean in and out of the, um, the view. And I think I picked it up in college where we would lay two colors next to each other to push the colors back and forth. That's probably where I picked up that terminology. But this one we use um, Payne's Gray. I have um, Black Oxide on here, or just Lamp Black. I've been picking up different blacks to play around with. The dark and I'm going to darken this side, kind of the shadow of the barn, and dark tree. I can um, draw around this tree, create the shape of it, and I can lay bushes in front. This is a very common image that I've been I've been using this a lot, a lot, a lot. Uh, and I picked it up from Herman Herzog's uh, painting on the way to the fishing hole. That's what it was called. It was, um, I don't think I had the, uh, the date from it, but it was probably the late 1800s. So it's just a... Um, a barn shape that I've been using just receded back a little bit with a bush and then on what side I determined to be the shadow side so I'm saying this side we have that now speaking of warm and cool this seems to be pushing forward so I'm gonna have to figure out how to uh, get this to recede Actually, it looks nice through the camera lens, but what I'll do is I'll soften these tops. But I'm filming with my phone, and sometimes the phone isn't uh, the best at picking up perfect colors and tones. I know some artists set up um, actual like video cameras and whatnot, but that that that's a little bit out of my my, my price range. And then um, you know, since I live stream it, I'm able to download it and then get it up onto YouTube a lot quicker. So that's one of the reasons I, I use the live stream as well.
I think we're gonna go super dark in here. I don't have it on the palette ready yet, but it's gonna go dark in here. We're gonna have to add more foliage here. And since I decided this side to be the shadows, we're gonna have to shadow across. So that'll make for interesting. We haven't done any dry off whatsoever. Um, anything that's taking place is just natural drying or um, from lifting with the paper towel where we pulled up large quantities of water. Paints gray. One thing I have also grown fond of um, from Herman Herzog and others was, and I mentioned Ron Ranson earlier, you know, um, the fast and loose watercolors that we follow. Um, I think he also talked about it, just not focusing too much on the uh, foreground. And when I do fountain pen sketches, and I think I have one or two full length of videos of that up where I'm looking at the painting and just kind of sketching it with a fountain pen. There's just a lot of weaving and whatnot and textures and directions in foregrounds, but nothing that really draws the attention. There's usually something else in the scene that's bringing your eye to it. So it's, um, it's pretty interesting. I'm gonna scrape out a little bit of the reflection here. But one of the things that I've been becoming a fan of, sorry, two things at once. Here's the shadow on this back side. Here's the door. And here's that bush reflection. I've just been loving that little thing. Anyway. Another thing is um, rocks in the foreground. So I take the card, and this is very common. Um, Joe Menza is very good at scraping uh, rocks and whatnot. He might use it for mountains in the background as well. Uh, also, Stephen Cronin is very good at scraping with the card. And we use the, the scraping here, but here we're using it for rocks in the foreground. But I see it a lot in just the foregrounds of the Hudson River Valley painters. And I'm trying to, you know, pull what I'm learning from them into kind of a fast and loose tonalist style. But the, they put them in the foreground and it's just, just a natural part of it. It kind of helps, I think, directionally with the eye and whatnot, but it also uh, just helps it flow. This one, however, is not. These two are the same size. They're layered. I need to make this guy way bigger or something to, in order to change depth of field. So something like that. But it just adds a little um, kind of highlight in the foreground. I'm just taking the Payne's gray and putting it over it. A 
let's see. You could also scrape tree trunks, which I'm going to stand up to get a good look. So rather than using um, white in a painting, you can use scraping. And rather than using masking fluid or something like that, you're not always going to get perfect white from it. Um, some staining colors will work against you with it. Um, it does take a practice with the control of the quantity of water and whatnot. But it could be very beneficial to uh, a fast and loose painting. I believe I've seen, uh, I always say Rick S because of the pronunciation, I have a hard time with his last name. I've seen him on YouTube with his tutorials and he has fantastic tutorials. He also has a fantastic Facebook page um, for friends of uh, Rick and people share their artwork there and uh, tips and all that, or ask questions. Anyway, so uh, I've seen him scrape uh, background trees and whatnot, I believe. His approach, and I don't uh, want to do him a uh, dis disservice by the way I'm describing it. He, um, he will, he seems to do a very fine detail drawing and will often kind of masking fluid over it and splatter over it and whatnot. And then, um, kind of paint back and forth. He has, um, a really fantastic approach, a uh, very good, um, painter. If you are looking for another person to learn from as well. Like, uh, that's where I got the idea of spray bottles from, was from uh, him. So a lot of the people I mentioned in these videos, and somebody said they needed to start uh, keeping a notebook nearby to hear the names of all these other peoples. It's because um, the other people I mentioned, even though I've, some of them I've never personally talked to, some of them I have, but... The ones that I have talked to are fantastic people and the ones that I've watched the videos of that I haven't talked to in person or online or anything like that I mentioned them because you could tell that through their videos that they're genuinely good people and especially putting out uh, content and all that and you know, trying to help people out so that's why I mentioned them I also think that they uh have a lot of great information that can help you all out. So I'm just kind of going to be tickling back and forth and eventually we're going to do a dry off. I don't think, as of right now, I don't think I'm going to do um, a, any, any touch ups too much of anything after we do the dry off. But um, I'll tell you all right now, I wasn't really feeling like down. I was just feeling a little unmotivated. And I was like, you know what? I needed to paint. And that's why I said this one. I don't know if I'm going to talk that much in this video. But um, it's really, uh, I think for me, it's very healthy during these times to paint and to talk about what I'm doing and all that. So um, I want to thank you all for, for watching these. Is that um, you know, kind of, I guess, helping me through these times. Oh, uh, brush-wise, if you're ever wor uh, wondering about what this one is, this is a um, black velvet script. Oddly enough, and I didn't mean to do this painting like this at all. This one is actually mimicking a 
composition that I did that hangs up in the local courthouse. The one that I did was a lot more colorful. It was, um, it's called the Vermilion River. It's a local river. Um, looking up the river and back in here, you don't see the building, but there is a top of a rice mill. And it was, um, you know, blue and green, very sunny day, beautiful water and whatnot that I painted, or at least, you know, that's my opinion. And I'll stick by it. And um, the judge at the courthouse also was running a um, festival. And she said, you know, she wanted something for me. And she was a very nice lady. She wanted something for me to hang up in the courthouse. And just now I just realized that the composition is very similar. With the ground in front, water, building, tree line, recede. So that's uh, it's pretty cool. So consciously, or if it's just luck of the draw, that I would do that same composition, the compositional shape. I think after a while, and I'm not an expert on compositional shapes, and somebody requested this, and I think I had mentioned that I would like to start looking into it is talking about compositional shapes and whatnot, because I think there's only so many that you can really, after a while, you can start seeing what the purpose was and where everything goes with it. Just using the side of the rigger to model. By the way, I mentioned that um, the gentleman Rick, um, I, bought, I bought this brand because of his recommendation. I'm not going to add any figures to this one, but if you wanted to, you could. Um, a bird or something like that would be interesting. If there's ever any paintings that you'll like of mine, I have them up on um, Etsy. I haven't posted any new ones in a while because there hasn't been too much action on Etsy. But I need to uh, post some new ones, so that's going to go up. Uh, I'll get some more up there tomorrow. Oh, um, I always try to mention this. If you all want to follow along to these with these tutorials, feel free. And you know what? If somebody's like, hey, I like that, or a family member wants it, or whoever wants it, and they're like, hey, here's 20 bucks, I want that painting, feel free to sell the painting. Um, you know, so you have my permission to, to, to paint along, and then, if, like I said, if somebody wants to buy it, feel free to sell it. At the end of the day, this is um, a hobby and a uh, relaxing thing for me. Maybe one day I'll be good enough to, when I retire, to just paint full time. Get a little studio or something. Alright, uh, one thing, what else can I show you? The back of the, the um, brush, you can uh, scrape with that, get little marks in it. You can use this very base of the brush, you probably see that I wore, yeah, you can see a little ring there, I'm not sure if that's a natural ring or not, but I sometimes use that to scrape some. But you want to be careful. That'll kind of, uh, it's okay to damage the paper. Like watercolor paper, especially this is 100% cotton. It's meant to take a beating. But if it was in an earlier stage of the painting, 
it would uh, be something that you'd have to tackle and handle. I have a hard time probably painting over. Unfortunately, lemon yellow has not made its way into this one down the line. Um, we'll do more experimenting with that. Like I said, lemon yellow um, seems to work decent with this palette. So here, but all we used in this one was the sap green, Venetian red, um, phthalo blue, ultramarine blue, and Payne's gray. Some black might have caught onto the brush, but we're just going to chalk that up to the Payne's Gray because Payne's Gray is a mixture of blue and black. Just trying to get the last bit of this modeling to take place and what I mean by that is shaping this um, lands edge and helping it recede and shaping it against the, um, the reflection of the water. Bringing this reflection down to cut off the edge to prevent the eye from going off. All right, I think we played with this enough. Let's dry it off. We'll put a mat over it. We'll see how it looks from the side. I'm not going to bore you with the little bit of drying. I'll um, sign it and I'll finish drying it after I put the mat over it after I turn off the, uh, the video. And I'll take a picture and I'll get it uploaded. All right. Let's see. Right about there. Okay, here's our final result. You can see how the tone shifts a little bit as I move the camera, so it shows that. But I hope you enjoyed, and um, I'll talk to you all soon. Have a great day. Bye. -bye. And.